In other news, the April edition of hashtag AskTugTV is going to be giving away one of my guitars. Want to know more about it? Stick around till the end of this video and we'll share the details. What's up guys? Welcome back to Tug TV and welcome to another episode of hashtag AskTugTV. This is a little bit where we take questions from you guys and answer them to the best of our abilities. As always, we can't thank you guys enough for all the responses that come in and we will always, as usual, try to respond to as many as we can within a video. In case you do not see your question over here, don't feel bad about it. Go ahead and keep commenting in the comment section. Keep asking us questions and we will make sure to air it in a future episode. And while you're at it, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button along with the bell icon for more updates from us. Vaibhav Mughalavali asks, would love if you could make videos on mobile VSTs. Also, what's your opinion on DIY custom guitars and store-bought ones? Uh, you could let me know what are some of the VSTs you want to look at and you know, I'd be happy to start over there. Now coming to the second part of your question, I guess it's a very personal choice. I like DIY custom guitars. I think it's really, really great. There is a certain personal touch to it because you know, unlike a store-bought one which has a generic spec and all that and you know, there are 10 others like it, a custom DIY guitar will definitely always have that individuality to it. What you might want to keep in mind is this is something that could swing both ways because when you're customizing a guitar, you can go ahead and use some good quality, you know, materials, be it electronics, be it hardware, tone wood, all that stuff comes into play, which means you can build yourself a really, really awesome guitar. On the other hand, if you don't know what you're doing, you could end up building yourself a really, really guitar. So, you know, comes down to what works for you, comes down to how much knowledge you have, how much time you have. Money would also play a factor because if you're customizing a guitar, you know, it's important that you find a good luthier and obviously you're getting them to invest time. So it's not exactly going to be cheap. Store-bought ones, on the other hand, depends on the brand you buy. Some of them at stock itself are going to give you quite decent hardware. Some of them may not, or there'll always be that trade-off where something will be good and something will be bad. All right. So while I was editing the video, there's one thing I forgot to talk about. When we're talking about DIY guitars, you also have these sort of kits that are available which you can buy and then assemble the guitar yourself. If you are trying to consider one of these, uh, what I'd also suggest is keep in mind they're not exactly cheap because of the import duties and all of that. It is going to cost you in and about the same amount as getting a nice, decent entry-level store-bought guitar. Second thing you want to keep in mind is most of these guitars are assembled in China. So the overall quality of it is still going to be debatable. There's a possibility you're going to get parts that aren't finished properly. So you're going to have to end up doing a lot of work over there. Electronics will end up being shoddy. So very high chance that you will anyway be buying additional electronics, which will then bump the cost further up. Uh, the third point is I've only seen like one kit available on a known site like Bajao. The rest of them, uh, they're either on Amazon or they're on websites I probably don't want to put my money on. And coming to the whole DIY guitars versus off the rack guitars, well, I think a lot of you might know my answer already. Now for a lot of newer viewers out there, these are two guitars which I've heavily modified to kind of get it to my specifications of per se. This one used to be a Jackson JS227 and this used to be a Java, I don't know the body name, it's a uh, warrior copy. So coming back to the whole discussion of DIY custom guitars versus the whole off the rack guitars, the customized guitars are gonna offer you quite a lot of things, you know, with say the configurations, what you want, the changes, what you need, and well, the nuances, what you think would suit you as a player. Now there are two ways to achieve this. One of them is actually going for the DIY kits which are available on Amazon. Or you can choose the option that I went for which was basically picking up a guitar off the rack and customizing it to what you need. With all this said and done, there is another aspect of DIY guitars which you need to think about rather than just the playability. And that has to do with resale. The customized guitar, what you're gonna make for yourself is well, for yourself. So if you are looking to say flip it or sell it to anybody else, just be aware of the fact that you're not going to get the price point what you're looking at. Quite a lot of people don't exactly go for customized guitars because, well, for them, they don't actually know how it plays. And also aesthetically, they might not feel it's the best looking for them. 
Well, the bottom line still remains the fact that if you want a customized data, you know, say getting one off the rack and then customizing it to what you need would be the best option to go. And especially if you go for the used market ones, well, it works out really cheap. Your short review on the movie Sound of Metal. Now, for the viewers who are not actually aware of what Sound of Metal is, this is an original Amazon production, a movie, technically speaking. Now, coming to my review of the movie, well, the trailer did kind of hint that it had to do a lot more regarding the musical side of things. But when you actually go through the movie, well, it has multiple layers. If you ask me, this is one of those heartwarming stories that kind of deal with a lot of topics, you know, like from the very beginning, it's more about understanding yourself, uh, adapting to the changes, and also, well, a bit about setting your expectations right. And on top of it all, it kind of hints upon the factor that, you know, sometimes what you want might not actually be the best. Now, when you add all these elements with an underlying theme of a musician, well, it kind of does strike a chord with a lot of us. And to be perfectly honest, when I kind of saw the trailer, it didn't seem like this was a story that it was headed towards. It seemed more like it was concentrating on the musician's journey on stage. But yeah, it was not a bad surprise at the end. And, you know, I really enjoyed the movie. And if you guys haven't seen it, well, go ahead and make sure you check it out. Thoughts on Indian made electric guitars and amps. At the moment, I don't have anything Indian made. We had this little local Amaze guitar that we had picked up for the Modcaster project. Some time ago, I was having a conversation, you know, with Arnab Chatterjee on this channel itself and we were talking about vault guitars. Him and me both sort of resonate on one point is that they are surprisingly well made for its price. Uh, at the end of the day, they are entry level guitars and there is a little bit of cutting corners becomes evident, especially in things like, you know, electronics. In my case, it was the tuners. God, the tuner was bad. Bridge sometimes can be an issue, but what they also make for are excellent modding platform. If you are trying to do a DIY project, you know, in such a case, looking at an Indian made guitar, definitely a way to go. It's quite decently built. It's not, you know, absolute rubbish, which will disintegrate in like T minus 10 days or any of that. Definitely sturdy. It does need a little bit of upgrading, which you can anyway do based on what you need. So yeah, that's what I think about it. I think they've got great potential. I personally would love to sort of own, you know, something like a cathode guitar. Cathode makes some amazing guitars, you know, made in India. Uh, and then of course, from an acoustic standpoint, Cadence makes some good guitars too. So yeah, nothing to complain about. Now, when it comes to amps, I can't quite remember the model but there was one that I tried out. It was an entry-level amp again at the end of the day. Didn't do much. But if you want to know more about Indian-made amps and pedals, you should definitely head on over to Guitar Gear Gyan. Sahil has done a bunch of sort of reviews on this, and I'm sure you'll find answers there. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to his channel and give him a thumbs up as well. I mean, clearly by now you can see that we're a very small community and we have to help each other because YouTube isn't. YouTube? <laughs> An expensive amp plus pedal rig or neural DSV plugin and interface. Well, Gatorade, uh, this is a bit of a tricky question here. When you think about it, it all comes down to the functionalities, what you need it for. If you're somebody who's going to stick around in the bedroom and record all your tracks, well, the neural DSP and an interface is the way to go. But if you are somebody who's going to have a lot of live gigs and need to record at home as well, yeah, then pretty much a pedal board would be the best way and the amp as well. And before you take this decision, kind of do take your environment also in mind because if you're staying in say a remote house, then yeah, you can afford to kind of have the amp, the pedal board and record at high volumes. Well, if you are somebody who's stuck in an apartment like the most of us, well, the neural DSP does give you a lot of options for recording at lower volumes. Think about the necessities, what you need your rig for and also let us know which was the option that you went with. Prashant P asks, do some videos on stomp boxes for bass, bro. Some of us could use your research skills. Firstly, Prashant, thanks so much, man. Uh, definitely helps that you believe in us. It did sort of cross my mind in terms of doing this. But then again, YouTube doesn't pay us squat. So it's going to take a while for us to save up some money. But you know, if that's what you're looking for, hopefully uh, at some point in time, I can get my hand on some good sort of, you know, stomp boxes. Uh, in the used market or brand new, depending on my finances. And I'll be happy to cover a few for you. Should I do that? 
What are some of them that I should start off with? Any pedals in mind that you'd like to see? Comment. Best entry level guitar amps with a mic input for busking. Well, before I actually give my answer out, I'm pretty sure this answer is going to be a bit controversial when you think about it. But the best amp for busking which I've come across till date is this one right here. So this little amp right here is the Stranger C15. And coming to the features what it offers, well, you can actually connect three different inputs to it. And yeah, before all of you guys start to point out how bad the distortion of this particular amp is, well, this is something I'm already aware of. But then this isn't necessarily something which is going to hold you back. If you add this up with a few pedals, well, it's going to sound phenomenally good on the live scene. And especially since you're concentrating on the whole busking scene, well, the three inputs do help out. You can use one of the input for feeding in your guitar, another one for your vocals as well, and the third one if you want to have a backing track playing along. And when you're getting all of these features for say sub 5k, well, it's the perfect amp. And also if you search the used market, well, you might find one of these for around 1500 to 2000 bucks as well. So yeah, hopefully we've answered your question and happy busking. Just make sure your volumes are low enough so that the cops don't come and catch you. Abhinash asks, have you ever considered growing up hair and what's your windmill headbang record? I don't really remember my windmill record, uh, if I even hold one for that matter. But yeah, I did have long hair for the longest time. It just became a little difficult to maintain and considering that, you know, from a career and work standpoint, I am a customer facing employee. Also, I kind of prefer the shorter, it's just convenient. And let's not forget. Well, Avnish, when I think about it, I think the longest hair which I had was, I think, early on in my musical career, I kind of had it below my shoulder length. Sadly, there aren't too many videos or pictures which actually have this. And yeah, at that point of time, I was like fresh off of college and not yet entered the corporate life. And also, let's face it, a lot of you guys might know that there are a lot of, you know, stigma which actually surrounds long-haired people in the office. If you have undergone any criticism in your work because of the way you look, let us know in the comments down below. And coming to the record for windmilling, I think it would go down to the Cannibal Corps gig which happened. I think this was Cult Fest. Don't exactly remember the year though, but yeah, it was one hell of an experience and I can remember being drunk, like, really really drunk and head banging my whole body at times body banging yeah that sounds more perverse than it's supposed to be what's your dream guitar to own import restrictions and price be damned well this is something which is a very difficult decision for me well, it kind of comes neck and neck between two designs. The first one is the Jackson King V. I would love to own a custom shop V. And also when you think about history, Jackson was the first one to kind of perfect the pointy V. Thanks to Dave Mustaine, but yeah, that's a different story altogether. And the second one is honestly the newer line of BCRH Warlocks. Now before all you keyboard warriors kind of start going across on how bad BCRH guitars are, well the new ones are quite promising and since I love the whole Warlock shape, yeah, that would be my dream guitar. This, the Schecter Keith Mero KM7 MK3 Hybrid. Oh, Fire in the Void is irresistible and overwhelming song. Is it only for me or I'm just the only one? Well, Nick, just me, there is no denying that it's one hell of a song. Well, for me personally, I remember blasting it at home, on my iPod and anywhere possible when it was first released. There is a sort of eeriness to both, you know, the way the song is and the video as well. And yeah, it is irresistibly headbang worthy. So yeah, anyone else who feels that this is a brilliant song, make sure you hit the like button. Well, I know it was pretty much a selfish ask, but hey, what to do? We are on YouTube after all. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Hashtag Ask Tuck TV. If you have more questions, if you have something we haven't answered, go ahead and let us know in the comments or you could, you know, sort of reach out to us on any of our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and we will be sure to answer them in a future episode in case we haven't already. And while you're at it, you can also check out some older episodes of Hashtag Ask TV or any of our other videos. Finally, coming to that guitar giveaway.
Have you seen the date? As of time that this video was released, it was 1st of April. Happy April Fool's Day. I'm not giving away my guitars. What's wrong with you? Bye.